ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الحدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار وبعد before i continue my brothers barak allah fikum i ask that you make the rows as tight as possible and that there is unless you have something wrong with your back or an illness then there is no need for any of the men to be sitting against the back wall <coughs> it is a sunnah of allah's messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam rather not even a sunnah a command of allah's messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam in filling the front rows that the men should be near the front and they should not be near the back this is a command of your messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam obey it whoever wishes to obey it reject it whom so ever wishes to reject it barakallahu fikum ibn qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala <coughs> he mentions in zadul ma'ad this great imam he mentions that since health is one of the most precious favors that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon his creation indeed it is the most generous of gifts and the most plentiful of his bounties rather even more absolute health is the most precious of all of the favors of Allah without exception once a person has entered into islam So it is it is fitting that whomsoever is granted a portion of this fortune of good health that he cherish it he preserve it he guard it against harm and Imam al-Bukhari rahimahullah ta'ala has narrated in his sahih from Abdullah ibn Abbas radiyallahu anhuma that Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said ni'matan maghbun fihima kathir min an-nas الصحه والفراغ that allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that there are two bounties within which or regarding which many of the people have become neglectful or that they are unaware and neglectful الصحه having good health and free time ibn qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala also mentions that the usul of medicine of tibb that the foundations of medicine meaning medicine of the abdan or the medicine of the body is of three types or is of three basic fundamentals he said first of them is the preservation of health the second of them a diet that avoids that which causes harm to the body and thirdly removing harmful matter from the body these are the fundamentals of medicine as ibn qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala has stated furthermore in another place ibn qayyim rahimahullah also said that if one looks at the medicine of allah and that which allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent to his messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam and that which is reported from the wahi that was descended upon the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam as compared to the tib to the medicine that is practiced by the people and that which they have found and invented he said that there is no doubt 
for anyone with any intellect and any knowledge of the creator and of the affairs that there is no comparison between the two that which is wahi which allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent down as a cure then there is no comparison between that and that which the people themselves have invented and then then we mentioned the statement of imam dhahabi rahimahullah ta'ala in his beautiful work also entitled at-tibb an-nabawi this work of imam dhahabi rahimahullah ta'ala with the same title as has been given to that which has been extracted from zadul ma'ad from ibn, by ibn from from the works of ibn qayyim rahimahullah imam dhahabi rahimahullah he said it is compulsory upon every muslim to seek nearness to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by way of every means that he is able to muster and gather together he must exert himself in fulfilling the commands and the acts of obedience and after the affair of fulfilling the commands and keeping away from that which allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forbidden then the most beneficial means and the most successful path of nearness to allah for a person is to maintain good health and to treat the sicknesses because after the affair as he has mentioned because the affair rather of good health is something that is sought in the legislated supplications and the acts of worship so look at this ni'mah that the ulama of al-islam the likes of ibn qayyim the likes of imam dhahabi and of recent times Imam Sa'di rahimahullah ta'ala from the great scholars of this era and from the teachers of Ibn Uthaymin rahimahullah ta'ala the Imam Sa'di rahimahullah he mentions the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam ma anzala Allah da'an illa anzala lahu shifaan that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not send down an illness or a disease except that along with it Allah sent down its cure there is no da'a There is no illness or disease except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed for it its cure. The hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari. So Imam Sa'di after quoting this hadith in Bahjatul Qulub al-Abrar, he mentions this hadith in general encompasses all illnesses whether hidden or apparent that there is a medicine that combats those diseases and those illnesses. Then he mentioned either by way of prevention by preventative me- measures that bring about immunity or by curing the sickness completely or by reducing the effect of that sickness so in this is an encouragement encouragement from whom from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon the tongue of his messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam so in this is an encouragement to learn the cures of the body just as one learns the cures of the heart then he continues to say that the foundations of medicine or good health and well-being are firstly controlling and managing one's nourishment that he bring that he puts into his body so that a person does not eat unless he has an appetite to eat that he digests the food that he has previously eaten completely before he starts eating again that he digests the food that he has cu- that he has eaten previously completely thirdly that he researches and he investigates and he finds out and he seeks out the most no- nutritious foods and this is in accordance as he has mentioned imam sa'di with the state of partic- particular lands and the people and prevailing conditions Fourthly he mentions one should never overeat so that he becomes full as that will harm him and place a burden upon his digestion Ibn Qayyim also mentions in Zad al-Ma'ad about this point that a person may eat and eat and that eating will bring about illness upon his body it will bring about a disease upon his body because he eats beyond his capacity to the point that he damages his heart whose words ibn al-qayyim 
over 700 years ago, ya ikhwan. Something that now we are beginning to see, that which our ulama and that which the scholars of this deen have mentioned, by studying the prophetic medicine and by studying the kitab of Allah and the sunnah of Allah's messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Imam Musa'adi then continues, he should take to limiting the range of food that he eats and the amount of food that he eats. So you should watch your diet, he said, and avoid harmful amounts of food so you do not eat more than what you need. And likewise, that you avoid food that itself causes harm or eating food at certain times should be avoided. And then he mentions, and thereafter, if it is possible, he should expel that which is harmful from his body. In this way, Imam Sa'adi continues, it is possible. In this way, he attains the desired result. And this is all without immediate recourse to drugs. Whose words? Imam Sa'adi. And that is better and more beneficial. So these are the, men- these are the points that Imam Sa'adi mentions with regard to how a person, first of all, Imam Dhabi and Ibn Qayyim, about the greatest of the ni'am of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah has bestowed upon his creation. So much so that the Prophet sallallahu mentioned in a hadith, he mentioned that if a person is sick or a person is upon a journey, then it is written for him, his deeds as if he was healthy or a resident. Meaning here, that when a person becomes sick, ya ikhwan, that that ni'mah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him of good health, then Allah has withdrawn it from him. Or that he has taken the means that have led to that benefit and that bounty from Allah being, mis- being taken away from him. So if he was a righteous person, and a person who used to worship Allah plentifully, when he was in good health, then it will be written for him when he is sick, as if his deeds were when he was healthy. Barakallahu feekum ya ikhwan. These are ni'am from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, good health. And that's why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned, your health before your illness. Meaning, take account of your health before your illness. How does one take account of his health before his illness? That when Allah gives him good health, that he tries to maintain it, not abuse it. And in that time of good health, that he worships Allah. Jalla wa ala. That he performs those acts that are going to be difficult for him were he to be sick. Likewise, his youth before his old age. That when a person becomes old and he becomes decrepit, that that person finds it hard to worship Allah. Meaning perform those acts that are hard upon him. Such as fasting, hajj, umrah and other than that. So he does those deeds, ya ikhwan. When Allah has given him good health and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him Good, a, a good body, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him time. Barakallahu feekum. Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala mentions, illnesses are caused by consuming more food before the previous meal has been digested. One of the diseases of our era, ya ikhwan. The disease of the person who becomes fat upon the land, as is mentioned in a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Khairun nas qarni, he said, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. The best of mankind is my generation. Then those who come after them, then those who come after them, then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam mentioned one of the riwayat. Then they will come, become, come a people who will become fat upon the land. People who, who eat and indulge themselves beyond that which, that which they need. And then they harm themselves. And then they are not able to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because they have brought the illness upon themselves. So illnesses are caused by consuming more food before the previous meal has been digested. By eating in excess of the amount needed by the body. By taking in food which is of little nutritional value and slow to digest. Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah 700 years ago. The same now this science that they call today. They say that a person can be obese and he can be malnutritioned, malnutritioned at the same time. Huge and big. But he's malnutritioned. Why? 
Because he's eating and eating and eating. But he's not eating quality. And he's not eating nutritional food. Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala mentioned. So he takes in food which is of little nutritional value. Slow to digest. By indulging in different foods which are complex. In their composition. So different types of food that come along. Complex, many different ingredients. Just when you read the back of a packet sometimes. 20, 30 different ingredients. Complex foods. Ibn Qayyim, 700 years ago, ya ikhwan. When a human being fills his belly with these foods, it becomes a habit. They cause him various diseases when he fills his belly with this, in this manner. They cause him to, to become ill and sick. And some of those illnesses, they come to an end very slowly. And some of them more swiftly. When he is moderate in his eating, and takes only so much as he needs, keeping a balance of quantity and quality, then the, bon- then the body benefits more from that, more, more from this, than it does from large amounts of food. So the benefit, ya ikhwan, and the ibra here, and the issue here, and the attention here, is not given to quantity, but to quality. When a person eats, in accordance to how the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to eat, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said in a narration that a person should eat just to maintain the uprightness of his spine. That's how the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to eat. Ya ikhwan, do not be of those people that they eat and they eat to the point that they find it difficult to make the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa taala, that they bring harm upon their body. And they cause harm upon their own limbs and their hearts and their internal organs. No doubt, ya ikhwan, as occurs in some of the statements, as we have mentioned from Imam Dhahabi, rahimahullah ta'ala, after we mentioned that which Ibn Qayyim said, what did he say? That absolutely, that health itself is from the, is the greatest fadl and bounty that Allah bestows upon the servant. And then what did he say? So it is upon him to cherish it. Thank Allah Jalla wa ala for good health. That he preserves it, that he looks after it. It's an amana. That the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in a hadith, that your body has a right over you. Preserve your body so you can preserve your ibadah. Preserve your body so you can read the Quran. And you're not falling asleep. Preserve your body that you can make hajj and umrah. With our illnesses and harms that you have brought upon yourself. Preserve your body so you can make a wasila that aids you in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when a person falls sick, when he falls sick, then we also recognize that it is mashroor, it is legislated, that we call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring about that cure. And from the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the name of Allah al-Shafi. It's from the names of Allah Jalla wa Ala. And when a person, he falls sick, that he calls upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by his name, Ash-Shafi. So as Allah Jalla wa Ala has stated in his book, وَلِلَّهِ الْأَسْمَاءُ husna, فَدْعُوهُ بِهَا وَذَرُوا الَّذِينَ يُلْحِدُونَ فِي أَسْمَائِهِ سَيَجْزَوْنَ مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ That Allah has mentioned that to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala belong the most beautiful names. So call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by way of them. From the names of Allah, Ash-Shafi. It's the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The one who cures and the one who brings about cure. Likewise then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, وَذُرُوا الَّذِينَ وَذُرُوا الَّذِينَ يُلْحِدُونَ فِي أَسْمَائِهِ And leave alone those who distort and they deviate the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. سَيُجْزَوْنَ مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will recompense for that which they used to do by way of distorting and deviating the names of Allah. So from the names of Allah, Ash-Shafi. That Allah is the one who brings about the cure. And no Muslim should be in any doubt with regard to that. It is from the beautiful names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So much so that, we, that it is considered amongst those names that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was, that if a person was to encompass them, understand them, live his life by way of them, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will enter him into Jannah. 
as Allah jal, as Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam said inna lillahi tis, tis'atan wa tis'ina isma that indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has 99 names not that it is limited to 99 meaning from the many names of Allah they are 99 not that Allah only has 99 names as ahlul ilm such as ibn taymiyah and ibn thaymin and others from the ulama from the salaf and from the later times have mentioned that Allah is, Allah's names are not just limited to 99 Allah has many more names than 99. Mi'atan illa wahid. A hundred minus one, the Prophet Sallallahu said. Man ahsaha dakhlul jannah. Whomsoever that he learns them, encompasses them, understands them, lives in accordance to them, then he will enter into jannah. So from the names of Allah is a shafi. From the beautiful names that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned in this book is this name. A shafi. That Allah is the one who cures. And curing here encompasses curing of the body and the curing of the heart. Curing of the heart from doubts and desires. Curing of the heart from that which leads a person away from the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And likewise it is a curing of the abdan, of the physical bodies. That the curing of the physical bodies is brought about when a person becomes ill. That he calls upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with this name. And there is narrated by Bukhari and Muslim from Aisha radiallahu anha, wherein the Prophet sallallahu used to perform ruqya and, the, and treat the ailments of his wives. He used to perform ruqya upon himself when, they, when, they, when he used to become ill. And likewise upon his wives when they used to become ill. By passing his right hand over the ailment. His right hand over the area of sickness. And the Prophet ﷺ used to say, Adhib al Bas, Rabb al Nas, Ashfi anta shafi, la shifa illa shifa uka, shifa an la yugadiru saqama. That the Prophet ﷺ used to say, Remove the harm, O Lord of the people. Heal for you are the healer. There is no healing that avails except for your healing. A healing. That leaves behind no ailment. This is the dua that the Prophet ﷺ used to make. A curing, ya ikhwan. And likewise, it is legislated for the Muslim to say, Ya Shafi, Ashfini. O curer, O healer. Meaning Allah, bring me cure or heal me. And Allah is the one who cures the diseases of the hearts, such as rancor and hatred and the forbidden desires. And jealousies. Who is the one who cures that disease of the heart? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he heals the illnesses of the body of the, of the, of the badan. And the abdan of the body and the bodies of the humans. And no one is invoked with this name. Ashafi, shafi Except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And from, from the fruits of having iman. In this name of Allah. From those fruits. Firstly. Knowing that Allah is the one who cures. And Allah is the one who sends down the cure, as we have mentioned. So a shafi, there is no one who is the true healer besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no healing except for the healing of Allah. And no one expels illness and sickness except for Allah. Regardless of the illnesses of the body or of the soul. Irregardless, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned. وَإِنْ يَمْسَسْكَ اللَّهُ بِضُرٍ that Allah has mentioned, and if, naam, that if one is, one is taken or is touched by harm, then no one can remove it except for Allah. No one can remove it except for Allah. So, فَلَا كَاشِفَ لَهُ إِلَّا هُوَ وَإِنْ يَمْسَسْكَ بِخَيْرٍ فَهُوَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ And if a person is touched, so no one can remove the harm except for Allah. And if a person is touched, with good, and if you are touched with good, then Allah is able to do all things. So this is what we believe as Muslims, ya ikhwan. Allah is the one who can remove the illness. Rather, there is no removing of sickness, except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills it, and Allah is the one who brings down and sends down the cure for that. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.
الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وبعد. From those benefits, my brothers and sisters, is knowing that Allah is the one who heals, and therefore the fact that He did not, and therefore knowing the fact that He did not send down a disease except that He sent down for it its cure, as we have mentioned in the Hadith of Abu Huraira that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "ما أنزل الله داء." That Allah did not send down a disease except that He sent along with it its cure. And from the means of this cure are many that we find in the hadith of the Prophet. And we will just mention a handful of them. From them is the recitation. From them, Barakallahu Fikum, is the recitation of the Quran and calling upon Allah with dua. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned in a hadith which is authentic or in a, uh, uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned in an ayah and likewise in various hadith that are authentic that if a person calls upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then Allah will answer him وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ, سألك إِبَادِ عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ وَجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ دَاعِي إِذَا دَعَانِي Allah's messenger, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said say to your, say to my servants Say to them, to my servants when they ask you regarding me, then tell them that I am near. Ujibu da'wa tada'i. And I answer the supplication of the one who supplicates when he supplicates to me. So we call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring about cure. Likewise, there is a hadith that is reported in the Sunan of Abu Dawood from Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu, where he said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, من عاد مريدا the whomsoever visits the sick person لم يحضر أجله and he still has not died that he is he is still alive فقال عنده سبع مرارا and that he says in his presence seven times the following أسأل الله العظيم رب العرش العظيم أن يشفيك that he that he mentions this in front of him this supplication I ask Allah the Magnificent, the Lord of the Magnificent Throne to cure you. Except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will cure him from that illness. From the means that bring about cure is the recitation of the Quran. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned, وَنُنَزِّلُ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ مَا هُوَ شِفَاءٌ وَرَحْمَةٌ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَلَا يَزِيدُ الظَّالِمِينَ إِلَّا خَسَارًا That here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned and we have sent down the, from the Qur'an that from, which, from it, that which is a cure and a mercy for the believers and Allah will not increase the wrongdoers except in loss. So all of this, ya ikhwan, from that which we have mentioned, from the dua, from the supplications, from the recitation of the Qur'an, that the Prophet ﷺ, you would visit the sick, and he would make dua for them, the right of a Muslim upon a Muslim, visit him when he's sick, and make dua for him. This is the haqq of a Muslim upon a Muslim. And make ruqya with the book of Allah, just as the Prophet ﷺ would make ruqya upon himself. And this is awla, that when a, when a person is sick, that he recites upon himself, that he doesn't pick up the phone, and look for people to give money to so they can make ruqya upon you. La ya ikhwan. Trust in Allah, make ruqya upon yourself. Call upon Allah, make dua to Allah, read the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As occurs in the two sahihs from Aisha radiallahu anha, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say to the sick person, Bismillahi, turbatul ardina, biriqati ba'dina, yushfa saqimuna, Rabbina. That the Prophet ﷺ used to say to the sick person, In the name of Allah, the soil of our earth, the saliva of some of us, cures our sick by the permission of our Lord. And it is reported in Bukhari and Muslim that the Prophets that went, the Aisha radiallahu anha, in the final illness of the Prophet وسلم, that she would recite, Qul a'udhu bi rabbil falaq and Qul a'udhu bi rabbil nas. She would recite them upon the Prophet ﷺ, 
and blow over his body. And when his illness became severe, she said that she said that the Prophet ﷺ would recite them himself, and then he would blow over his own body. Then when his illness became severe, she said that I would recite them, and then I would blow over him, and I would make him rub his body with his own hands for the blessings. Imam Zuhri rahimahullah ta'ala mentioned that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would blow over his hands and then pass his hands over his body. Also honey. Honey is a cure that Allah has mentioned in the Quran. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned, يَخْرُجُ مِن بُطُونِهَا شَرَابٌ مُخْتَلِفٌ عَلْوَانُهُ فِيهِ شِفَاءٌ لِلنَّاسِ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that comes out of the belly of the bee. A liquid of different colors and in it there is a cure for the people. Bukhari and Muslim also mention the narration of the Prophet ﷺ regarding the black seed or the black cumin as it is called or the Nigella sativa as they call it in English. The Habbatul Sauda that the Prophet ﷺ mentioned that it is a cure for every illness except for Assam. They said, what is Sam? The Prophet ﷺ said it is a cure for every illness except for death. Habbatul Sauda, cure, prophetic. Is there any equivalent, ya ikhwan? No equivalent to the likes of honey, to the likes of the Quran, to the likes of dua, to the likes of the black seed. Hijama, the Prophet ﷺ mentioned, healing is in three. In the hijama, the cupping. And likewise in the drinking of honey. And likewise in the cauterization. Using fire or branding with fire to bring about cure. Then the Prophet ﷺ said, except that I have for- forbidden my ummah from cauterization. Likewise, ya ikhwan in zamzam, in the drinking of zamzam, the Prophet ﷺ said that the water of zamzam is for whatever it has been drunk for. Whatever you drink it for, that is the cure that you'll find in it. And it is collected from, from Abdul Razak in his Musannaf. That Abdullah, naam, from Abdul Razak in his Musannaf. That Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhu, or Abdullah ibn Abbas rather radiallahu anhuma, that he used to drink the Zamzam water. And he used to make the dua to Allah. That he used to say, Oh Allah, I ask you for beneficial knowledge and plentiful rizq and cure for every illness. Zamzam? For whatever you drink it for. What did he ask for? Ilm. Provision and cure. Barakallahu feekum. Cure that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent down. And he has mentioned in his book or upon the tongue of his messenger. Also, it is mentioned with regard to milk. The milk of the camel. The urine of the camel. As in all of those ahadith in Sahih al-Bukhari. And Sahih Muslim in other places. That the urine of the camel. The milk of the camel within them there is a cure. At tabarani reports from Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. Radiyallahu anhu. Declared Hassan by Shaykh al-Albani rahimahullah. In Sahih al-Jami' That the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Tadawaw bil albani al-Baqar Cure each other Or use as a cure The milk of the cow Fa inni arju an taj'al Allahu fihi Fiha shifa'an For indeed I hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Has placed within it A cure Fa innaha ta'kulu min kulli shajar for indeed it eats from all different types of herbage. So Allah has placed a cure in milk. Imam Ahmed reports in his Musnad. Now Allah's Messenger wasallam said, Indeed Allah the Most High did not create a disease, except that He created for it a cure. So upon you is the milk of the cow. For indeed it feeds, every, for, for indeed it feeds from every type of herbage, every type of green shrubbery. Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala mentions milk is at its best when freshly milked. He also stated milk in general is the most beneficial drink for the human body due to the nutritive elements that are contained in it. Zadul Ma'ad, Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala. Likewise from those things that bring about cure is the soil of the earth as Ibn Qayyim has mentioned. And the trees and the fruits and the vegetables that Allah has placed in the earth from those who have knowledge of these affairs. And the knowledge of Allah, Allah has endowed this knowledge upon specific individuals. 
And those individuals, they know that which Allah has sent down from cure. And know for a surety, my brothers and sisters, that there is more than this. There is the talbina, which is like a, a ground flower made out of barley. That the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used to say, give it to those who are grieving. Those who have sadness in them. For indeed, it revives the soul and it removes grief. So the Messenger of Allah and Aisha radiallahu anha, after the death of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when someone used to die, she used to say to them, make this. Make this like a, almost like a porridge type of thing. With the talbina, ground flour. And then drink it for indeed, I heard the Messenger say sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and then she narrated the hadith that you remove the grief of the sick person. This is the cure that Allah has sent down. Those things, ya ikhwan, that a person never despairs. How many times we have heard of situations where a person becomes terminally ill or the doctor says he's going to die, no cure. So then the person gives up hope. La ya ikhwan. The person of iman does not give up hope. Does not give up hope. Narration after narration that we know of, even to the extent that the Prophet ﷺ connected the giving of sadaqah to cure. That if you give sadaqah, Allah will cure your sick. Oh, kama qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And only the other day a narration reached me from one of the brothers, barakallahu fihi, that he mentioned that he heard of a situation in Riyadh where a close family member had become sick and ill in hospital and the doctors, they said there is no cure. So the father and the mother went out and they gave sadaqah to the poor. Kept giving sadaqah for this cause and that cause and this cause. And they said, as they were giving sadaqah, the one who was ill in the hospital without cure, that by hour, by the hour and the next hour and the next hour, he got better. The more they gave him sadaqah and the doctor said, we don't know what's happening. We don't know what's happening. His health is improving and we haven't done anything. Why? Because they were giving sadaqah in the cause of Allah. Dua ya ikhwan. How many cases like those who are mas'ulun, those who are responsible for the haram in Mecca, narration after narration that you hear from them, that a person comes with cancer, terminally ill, and they come to the haram, and they make ittikaf in the masjid in Mecca, and then they drink zamzam, and they eat that which the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi has mentioned from honey, and other than that, and they have become terminally ill expecting, and the doctors have said to them, you will die. And they are cured by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So do not despair, ya ikhwan. Trust in Allah. Trust that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent down. And barakallahu feekum, be of those who does not become inattentive and unaware and neglectful of these two affairs. Good health and free time. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.